to my channel SOS Art of Darkness let the sun shine and let the moon give its light and before the stars fall from heaven my topic for discussion and the first of my my series of will be the great salvation and this is found in Hebrews chapter 2 in verse 3 it only shows up once in the whole Bible the great salvation really how what is the great salvation really is how God is going to fix all how is he going to fix all these all everything that we see in the world how is he going to fix it I've been studying for over 20 years on this particular topic and I want to share to you what I found that was really interesting of how he's going to fix this and it might be foreign to you you might not understand it off the start because it will be foreign because it's something new that you know that I caught by chance and I'm going to have a series of of you know of episodes so let's get into it. I'm going to de you know these are the books I'm going to be using the first one would be the dialogue it's made by uh, Wilson and it's a Vatican manuscript from 1290 and uh, this comes into two volumes I'll be using that for reference and the next one is Vines Dictionary it's a very well-known dictionary uh, for word for word of all the Old Testament and the New Testament uh, a lot more detail than just the average one behind your Bible and next one yeah. and the next one is just a Hebrew Bible that the Jewish people use and it's uh, Hebrew into English, almost like an interlinear. And the next one, it comes in an interlinear Bible, four volumes, large print, so that the view I can view it good on the on the camera. And this has the King James Bible on the one side, and the other side, on the left side, is just the literal wording of the Bible and then the translation of King James. Next, keyword Bible. This one is my personal Bible and it's just focusing on the keywords of the Bible and it has a small dictionary at the back but not as detailed as the Vines dictionary. What I've chosen is the King James Version, the 1611 edition because I know that everybody has one so everybody can take, take you know, heed in it. But what this one here is a strong dictionary and it interprets the or gives the word number the meaning of the word like for angel for example and where it shows all in the bible so this is what i'm using a strong dictionary along with the king james bible the 1611 but now we're going to pick it up we're not going to read the first six verses. We're going to start at number six. Because this is a prophecy that hasn't happened yet. And if you, if you just glance at it, and again, when he brings his firstborn into the world, but the world is, is not the world. It's translated inhabitants. Okay? Something like the Romans used to use the whole inhabitants of the Roman Empire, or in that house, the inhabitants. So it's a different word than the world. So it's everybody on the earth. So we're going to start reading it from number six. But before we do that, I'm going to show you that in number six, it's, it's bringing the firstborn into the heavenly earth, and it's a prophecy, but where does it stop? It stops at Hebrews chapter chapter 6 or 5 this is where everything from Hebrews chapter 1 and 6 to 2 and 5 is a prophecy because here it says unto the angels has he ever put into subjection the world to come whereof we speak that we're speaking about so this is the end of the prophecy it's not to angels that he gave the inhabitants if you look at that word again is called inhabitants everybody on the earth so this is where from again from 1 and 6 to 2 and 5 
is all the prophecy that hasn't happened yet. So let's get into it. Let's get a reader and we'll get into it. Have I begotten thee? And again, I will be to him a father. No. And he shall be to me a son. Right now. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he saith, Who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire? But unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is for ever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? No. Hebrews 2. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him, God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. Okay, thank you for reading. So let's take a look at this now. We're going to look at Hebrews chapter 2, and verse 5. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speaking. Or speak so let's see what this new world world to come that we are speaking about in this in this verse number five so let's look into it I, I want to try to make this simple uh, what I got out of it personally is the angels at the second coming of Christ in the revelation when he comes with all his angels the angels are going to come on the earth believe it or not on the earth, I know this is foreign, something new, but something else is to prove the scripture, so we're going to look into it, and teach us, literally teach us the truth, the accurate knowledge of the truth, and in this appointed time that Christ has. Okay, so let's look into it. It's easy said than done, so let's see what the scripture is, how we can prove this by using the scriptures. It's uh, 1 John chapter 4. It's a statement, a, a, a spirit, you know, test the spirit, if it's true or not. So let's look into the scriptures now. We've got to go back to Hebrews chapter 1 and 6. So the scripture that I just read in 5, 2 and 5, is somewhat of the conclusion of this prophecy that hasn't happened yet. So this is the beginning of it here in 5. And again, when he bringeth, his firstborn into the world. So this is the second coming. He says it. And let all the angels of God worship him. So there's a command here. God is telling the angels to worship his son. Okay. Number seven. And to the angels, he says, who making or maketh, making ing, his angel spirits. And his ministers a flame of fire. And number eight, this is what Jesus is coming here. But unto the Son he says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever, and a scepter of righteousness is a scepter of thy kingdom. <coughs> Excuse me, there's two orders here. When the Son of Man, when he brings his firstborn into the heaven earth, let the angels worship the Son. And let the, and, and, and towards the angels, flame of fire, this public 
uh, this 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 ministering thing here that we have to look up is actually the word is three thousand and eleven, and this word is actually a function of a temple word. If you look at it, it's used. This is a very important word that we have to really get the just of this word. So what what, what we're going to do is we're going to look up. This word only appears five times in the Greek scriptures. Five to six times, maybe six. Not too many times. So we want to really get clear of what this word really means, what the angels are. It says ministering a flame of fire. So now we're going to look at this. As it says there, it's a, a, a public minister, a servant of the state. In number, number, in number two. Now, we're going to look at the servant of the state because this word actually shows up in Romans chapter 13 about the governments or higher authorities, 13 and 1, let every soul be subjected to higher powers. So we know what that is. That's the governments, kings, princes, whatever, whatever it was back in those days, all forms of powers. So, if we look at this here, in number six, for this, for, for this cause pay ye tribute, also, for they are God's ministers. Now, there's the word, and it's exactly the same word, 3011. As a temple, we're functioning in the temple. And these are the governments, the higher authority. Jesus said, pay back Caesar things to Caesar, but God's things to God. Okay, so these are, and Jesus said to Pilate, that Pilate said to Jesus, that I have the power to do away with you right now. And Jesus said, you would not have the power, but it was given to you. So God has given this word, 3011, is a word that... God can assign it to you. It's a sacred word. One time, I had a, a privilege of talking to a Greek scholar. That he wasn't a scholar of the Bible, but he he read the letters that were sent from England, building the wall, to 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 Rome, in Greek in two thousand or seventy four. You know, whenever that wall was built. So, he said to me, I showed him this word. And uh, he said to me, wow, this word is a special word. It's a functioning of a high authority you put into place, you get voted in, you get asked to take care of this word. It's a sacred word. It's, it, it can be used in a temple. And he's right. He was right. And he was very, uh, very shocked that I would ask him about this word. Okay, because it's, 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 to me, this word is, is hidden. This is why I'm spending a lot of time on this word. Because this word seems to be hidden because they just put it, you know, ministers. And we don't see really what it is, okay? So it's a public functioning. So here, again, with the governments, he, uh, they, they are public workers, you know, sent by God. You have to be sent by God. So that's why we're going to look up at the next one in Romans chapter 15, where Paul, he states, 15 and 16, he states that he that I should be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles or to the nations. So there's that word, okay, minister again. It's the same word, okay, that functioning in the temple, a sacred word that God or Jesus himself selected Paul. What we know about the horse. He got knocked off the horse and he was selected. So he became a public worker of the Christ. And another place it shows up, it would be in Luke. Luke chapter 1. Uh, Luke chapter 1 and 23. That would be the temple, the priest in the temple. Just to go really fast. Because we just want to look at the context of the word, not what the scriptures are saying just that that particular word and as it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration well that word ministration 
would be 3009. It'd be the same word, a priest, a function in the temple, a public official, or whatever you want to call it. It's a sacred word. This priest was selected by God to be a high priest. So now the next place it shows up, believe it or not, it would be in Hebrews chapter 8 and 2. A minister, so this here is Jesus, who sat down on the right hand of the throne of the ministry in heavens, a minister. So again, 3011. Because Jesus was selected by his Father. He said, I don't do nothing unless the Father tells me to do. So now Jesus is linked with this word. Paul is linked with this word. The governments are linked with this word. And so are the angels. So this word and the high priest in Luke chapter 1 and 23. So this word, so let's get this word that we know what this word means now. So now we go back to Hebrews, and we're going to see that these angels are ministers. So actually, it's towards the angels, he says, he maketh his angel spirits, his ministers, a flame of fire. And to the Son, the throne is forever and ever, a scepter of righteousness is a scepter of thy kingdom. <laughs> now we're going to read, the Jewish people wanted to know what this was all about. Okay, they, this was written to the Hebrews. And they would have looked at the scriptures here because this writer is using the next one, number 9, he's using Psalms 102. He uses Psalms 110 and then Psalms 104. So let's see what the, the Jewish people, we're going to have this read from, from Psalms 102 all the way to 104 to see, to get a context of this scripture of what's really written in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little break here. We're going to go to Psalms 102. And we'll start reading at 13. At 13. So let's have that read all the way to 104. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. But the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. For thy servants take pleasure in her stones, and favor the dust thereof. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord, and all the kings of the earth thy glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. He will regard the prayer of the destitute, and not despise their prayer. This shall be written for the generation to come, and the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. For he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary. From heaven did the Lord behold the earth, to hear the groaning of the prisoner, to loose those that are appointed to death, to declare the name of the Lord in Zion, and his praise in Jerusalem, when the people are gathered together, and the kingdoms to serve the Lord. He weakened my strength in the way. He shortened my days. I said, O oh my God, take me not away in the midst of my days. Thy years are throughout all generations. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. The children of thy servants shall continue, and their seed shall be established before thee. Psalm 103 Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, 
who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Psalm 104 Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Who coverest thyself with light as with a garment. Who stretchest out the heavens like a curtain. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters. Who maketh the clouds his chariot. Who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Who maketh his angels a spirits, his ministers a flaming fire who laid the foundations of the earth, that it should not be removed forever. Thou coverest it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At thy rebuke they fled. At the voice of thy thunder they hasted away. They go up by the mountains. They go down by the valleys unto the place which thou hast founded for them. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over they turn not again to cover the earth okay so the Jewish people at that time would have checked Hebrews of what this writer was trying to say uh, they would have looked at all these scriptures they would have looked at especially in 103 where it says here number 20 but this word command commands is, is, is word okay so if you look at other translations this is the wrong translation. It's, it's, it states, Blessed be the Lord, his angels that excel in, in power or strength and do his and carry out his word. Okay, this is the wrong translation. And this here, by listening, by, by listening or hearing, To hear or to listen by listening unto the voice of his word. So they're carrying out his word by listening to his word. Okay, so this is, and then bless you, the Lord, number 21, his hosts is his army. Ye ministers, there's that word again of his to do his pleasure or his will. Okay. In all his dominion, all his, his kingdom, or what do you want to call it, that word would be his ruling area. So now we want to take a note here of his chariots here, number three. We know about the spirits uh, of his ministers, a flaming fire, but let's look at number three. His chariots, 
He maketh his clouds his chariots. He makes his clouds his chariots. So now these are angels. His chariots are angels. So we're just going to go real fast to Mark. To Mark chapter 14. Jesus is talking to, in 62, way down to 62. He's talking to the high priest. And the high priest asks him, Again, the high priest asked him, and said, number 61, said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Jesus said, I am, and ye sh shall see the Son of Man coming on the right hand of power, and coming with the clouds of heaven. Okay, so if you look at that, with, with the clouds of heaven, he's coming. The translation here would be with, oops, let's go down to with, okay. The priest, the high priest didn't know what he was talking about. He's talking about he's coming with his angels, the clouds. Okay, he, 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 he ripped his other garment, kill him, kill him now, it's blasphemy. But this is really true what, what Jesus was saying here, okay. And this is in Daniel chapter 7. I'm actually making a video on whole chapter 7, 13. And I saw the night vision, and behold, like a son of man came with, with the clouds of heaven, and, and came the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. So the son of man is coming with clouds. Now, if you, if you think about coming with clouds, how can, how can you see anything if, the, if he's coming in clouds? So it's symbolic, okay? It's his angels. I want to bring this up because in Isaiah, now, they, now they, they would have looked at a scripture in Isaiah 66 and 15, the Jewish, to confirm of what the Hebrews is saying. This is what we're backtracking of what the Hebrews would, or the Jewish people would have did at that time because they would have looked at it to see if this is, is it all these scriptures put, being put all together as making a theme, you know. So here in 15, for behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots, clouds, chariots, like a whirlwind, to anger, to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. By fire and by sword, the Lord will plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord will become many. This word slain, again, it's improper translation, is pierced. It comes from the word pierced. It would have used the word slain or kill or be killed, but it doesn't use that because it's not killing people because it cannot be killing people. It's piercing them. The word in the fire is piercing them. As in Hebrews, the word of God pierced right to the marrow. Number 18. I know their works and their thoughts. I shall come. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues and they will come and see my glory. How can they see the glory if fire comes down from heaven and kills them all? And they still don't know what's going on. They still, they still don't know what happened. Like Sodom and Gomorrah and, and maybe even Noah. They took no note. But this time it's going to be different. The angels are coming to clarify accurate knowledge to us. Okay. So now they were looked at that scripture back to Hebrews to get some more light on this, on this, uh, this Hebrews chapter 1. So we're going to, we, we read number 8, or number 9, actually this is a, this is a different scripture. So he had, he, he had this loved righteousness and hated lawlessness, that's what the word is, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but that word is, is lawlessness, okay, or wickedness, I'm sorry. Therefore God ye thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy followers. So this would be angels, okay? So these would be shares. That word is actually shares. Okay? A share, a sharing. And we know they're sharing because God said to the angels, flame of fire, go public workers or public servants, and to the sun, sit on the throne to put all enemies under your feet. So they're all sharers in this God's work. Okay. 
So we read number 10. So we're going to go down to 13. This is a very interesting. This is now the real proof that the angels are coming to talk to us and to service us and to show us the accurate knowledge that we need to see, okay, to make our decision if we want to worship God or not. Because right now we're only seeing wickedness, we're only seeing lies, deception, falsehood, even through religion, okay, uh, Evolution, we would get all these, you know, we, you know, we have to work. We're so pressured that we have no idea of what really the accurate knowledge of the truth. So now, in number 13, but to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool? Now that's a question, in number 13, a question. So we know that Jesus is definitely, okay, Psalms 110, we're going to go to that right now. Psalms 110. Again, the Jewish people would have, would have looked at that. 110, verse 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. So now Paul or Paul or whoever is writing Hebrews, I, I would say Paul would be, because he mentions Timothy at the end of the, of the book. Here, he's saying, which of the angels he say that? Well, it's obvious none of them. Because the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion and rule, though in the midst of thy enemies. Now the rod would be his angels, his strength or his power. <clears throat> in, 13, in, in 3, And the people shall be willingly or voluntarily. That word is voluntarily. Okay, because they love of what they're hearing. So this word is voluntarily. They, they love it. They, they love the truth and they say, yes, we believe in God and, and, and Jesus, you know, what he did for us. Thy people shall be voluntarily in that day of thy power. What power? Well, the angels are the power. Okay? So now, he said that to Jesus only. So if you look at this scripture here, if the Lord sends the rod of strength, his angels, out of Zion... To rule in the midst of his enemies, they cannot be at the right hand of God if the angels are sent forth. So that's how he answers the question in Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter one and fourteen. So this is very interesting. He says, "What well, exactly what I just said? Are they not all ministering?" Well, this word is the same word three o nine or three ten about a, a public fun, you know, functioning. Public working, but this is actually publicly workers or working. ING is an action word. So really, are they not all flaming fire spirits? A ministering sent forth to minister? Well, that word again is service or, or attend or service. Okay, again, we cannot see these things because both words are the same. Ministering and minister, but they're not. They're different. It's, this has been hidden. This I had to look at this and uncover this because it's not. That's not what it's saying. It's saying that are they not flying flames of fire angels, publicly working this temple word, spirits sent forth to minister to service for them who shall be heirs of salvation. So how can they be at the right hand of God? So the question to thirteen is none of them. He said, sit in my right hand. Only the Lord Jesus Christ. So because how can they be when they are sent forth? Now, we're going to go to number two. Now back in those days, they never had number two. They, it was a continuous thought, okay? So now we're going to look at the continuous thought. So there was no number two. That came 500 years ago. Therefore, it's two words, okay? The first word is through, is through, okay? And then the second word is this, is the word is used this, okay? This 192 times, and therefore 48 times, but therefore is through this, that has the word through this. So now, through this, well, we just, through this would be this here, 14, that the angels are coming to service those who are going to hear salvation. So through this, Number 14, 
we ought to give more earnest heed to the things we have heard, at least at any time should we let slip away or fall away. Okay? Do you see what I just did? Okay, so people don't read it that way. But it takes time to look at every word. And then you see that this is talking about 14. For number two now is a very important word. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience receives a just justice or recompense of reward. So, so this word here, reward, is, is a reward of good or bad. Okay, a reward of good or bad or payment. So if you listen, you, it's good. If you don't listen, it's bad. So now, number three. Here is what my whole theme is all about. How should we escape if we neglect, don't listen, okay? Or drift away, okay? So great salvation. So this great salvation, this the word salvation, is linked 100% to 14. Okay, that's the great salvation right here. Are they not all public workers or, or these, these flaming fire? Okay, coming, sent forth, of course by God, because go be flames of fire and minister. Okay, sent forth by God. For them, that's us, who shall be heirs of salvation, if we listen. So now, right after the great salvation in number three, which at the first, at the beginning, okay, this is, the word is beginning, okay, at the beginning, okay, Jesus was the first flame of fire, and we're going to get into Revelation, I'm going to make a series of, of revelation every chapter and if you look at some of the the Jesus there the Lord his eyes are like flames of fire three times it's mentioned that because he's not flaming anymore he did that already for three and a half years he sat down as a as a minister or this this word 3000 and, and, and 11 okay he did it already but his eyes are looking on like flames of fire what the angels are flaming now, coming to save us. Okay, this is all good. There's nothing bad about his coming. Okay, so now, in number three, which at the beginning, first began by be spoken by the Lord, that was confirmed unto us by them that heard him, that wrote the Bible. God, along bearing, you know, joined in, Bearing witness, both with signs, wonders, okay, and miracles, gifts, Holy Spirit, according to His own will. Number five is the end of this prophecy. For unto the angels, for into the angels, He had not put in subjection the world to come, of whereof we are speaking. Okay, so it's to us, if you look at it. You know, if you if you keep reading here, if you look at number eight, but now at the end, but now we see not ye all things put under his hem. If you read that, the earth was subjected to man, but we don't see it until the angels come. <coughs> Excuse me. Now one more scripture with Isaiah sixty six and fifteen, the the, the rebuke in flames of fire. Okay. And they will know, see all my glory. Paul wrote a scripture that is almost parallel to what we read in Isaiah. Okay, so briefly we're going to go look at it. Briefly. Oops, sorry. So we're going to look at Isaiah briefly. Again, 15, 15, verse 15. Okay, with his chariots. So, for behold, the Lord will come with fire. So this would be his word. And with his chariots, his angels, uh, uh, to, to his anger, a, a fury, and rebuke with flames of fire. How do, how do, you, how do you rebuke? How do you, how do you interpret that? Rebuke or reprove? Okay. How do, you, how do you reprove? Rebuke or reprove 
with flames of fire. So the secret is the angels are in the flaming fire. A, this temple were probably sent forth from God. So they are a public worker or servant. So by fire, number 16, in his word, he will plead with all flesh. Now, now we're going to see where this is a parallel in the New Testament. And then I will reveal my next video according to this next scripture that we're, we're going to read. So this is a very interesting scripture. I've looked at this for hours and hours. And I finally got the sense of this, what this means. After what you see, what the Bible says. So the Bible is interpreting itself. Okay, this is, this, this, this is like, again, be, uh, a new teaching. Uh, uh, very hard to understand because this changes everything. You know, but I mean, just add it to your knowledge. I'm not here to change anybody's religion or thoughts. Just add it to your spiritual knowledge. That's all I'm doing here today. Okay, now. If you look at 6, seeing it is righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So the word there really is affliction, okay? It's not tribulation. So tribulation to those that are tribbling or, or afflicting you. Number 7, and to you who are afflicted, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be, that word is revelation, in revelation from heaven with his mighty angels in a flaming fire well we'll stop at that it's it's a mode his powerful angels in is a mode in a flaming fire in rage or in in love let's go the other way but in a flaming fire what does that mean well we know what that means in a flaming fire public servants coming to service us so that we can see the accurate truth taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ now we have to look at this revelation we have to draw a line <coughs> excuse me with this gospel here all the people that I talk to, every religion or persons on the internet, that this here, they, 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 because, because they don't know about Hebrews or Isaiah, they put this gospel, that they're doing this gospel, and the people are not responding to it, and they're going to be destroyed. This has happened already. The angels are coming with fire all over the place, and they're just killing people. This inner flaming fire is they're killing people. Could that be wrong? Well, we know it's wrong. What we just read and what the Bible interpreted, they're not killing anybody. They're going to be changed as Psalms 102. They're going to put a garment on. You are the same forever and ever, but they're going to be put a garment on and they're going to be changed. Okay? They will be altered. Actually, the word is altered to do what is righteousness, to do what righteousness means doing what's right. Okay, now, if you draw the line, Revelation, this, this, this is actually number eight is taking place after Jesus comes. Well, that changes everything. Okay, so Jesus is here now, and this is taking place. The angels are coming in a flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that, that really acknowledge, acknowledge God. Okay, this is like more to see or, or not acknowledge or be aware or acknowledge. If you look at the dialogue, it says acknowledgement, but they don't acknowledge my God because of this flaming fire. They're not re, uh, responding to this this flaming fire. Is the the angels are coming, and they're telling us about accurate knowledge of the truth, and, and we're not responding. Okay, so but what happens here now in the flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that they want to know God, and they accept the, the gospel. Well, they're in good shape. Okay, they're not going to be destroyed. Uh, nobody's being destroyed here. But that's going to be my next video about Day of Judgment. But that will be an, another video. So, in a flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that do not want to know God. And those who do not even want to hear about Jesus. They, if you, basically, they, their life is good enough. Right now, the way they're living is good enough. They don't seem to want 
any changes. So number nine, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction. Again, that word destruction, is, it doesn't appear in the Bible, is ruined from the face of the, it's personal. Okay, at the face, like I said, I looked up every word. This, this word is face. Okay, so it's a personal. Jesus, the face of the Lord, his eyes are like flaming fire. He's looking on, he's taking it personal. Because the angels are flaming, his eyes are like flames of fire. He's watching this happening. And he wants you to respond. Okay. And from the glory of his power. So the glory of his power is, again, the angels. Okay. So now, we're going to read number 10. I know that this video is taking a long time. It will be close to an hour. I want to keep it under an hour. Number 10 is very important because this truth here about in a flaming fire, could you imagine mentioning to Paul a person that is in this gathering, a Thessalonians you know, you know, gathering, say, Paul, we, we see, received your letter. Yeah, so what did, what did you think? Are you encouraged? Yeah, yeah. But what's this in a flaming fire? The, the angels, what, what is that? Are they... Well, what do you think Paul would have said to them? Oh, don't worry, they, 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 they'll kill everybody. No, he never, he never would have said that. He would have went to Isaiah, Psalms. Now God's coming to, uh, to bring in his kingdom, and the angels are coming to enforce his word, okay? All through his dominion or his kingdom. <coughs> Excuse me. So now, this truth, that's why I'm making this video for people that are abused spiritually and this is a beautiful this is beautiful beautiful good news that god is is doing this like i said there's more videos there's a lot more that you're going to see the angels uh, one would be in jude if you want to read it i'm not going to look it up here we don't have the time i, like I said i want to keep this under an hour and jude said and enoch said that the seventh down the line that here comes all the myriads and myriads of angels and they're going to confront the people, ungodly people, ungodly things, ungodly sayings. So that's another indication, you know, in Jude, if you want to look that up later. So now, the reason, like I said, the reason I made this video is that this has to be witnessed here. Because this is very important here in number 10. When he shall come, well, that's the revelation, to be glorified in his saints... Now, I'm going to make a video about what the saints really means. Okay, this is the church of God. Okay, and these are the anointed ones that God has chosen to have a, 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 a kingdom. In, in, in Daniel chapter 7, they were given to the, you know, to the holy ones, right? all the dominion in, in chapter 7. So these are the saints, and... These are other people that are looking on, that are on the earth, and to be admired in all the other people, them, that believed, because our testimony among you was believed in, the, in, in that day. So this has to be brought out because the people, the, the saints are going to be raptured. Again, I'm going to have a video regarding that. The saints are being glorified in heaven with, with Christ Jesus. But all the rest of the people, they're believing in, in this in this inner flaming fire, this real truth of what's happening. Okay? Okay, so this is why I'm making this video. Because these people are mired in all them, number 10, that believeth. Because the testimony among you, the testimony of all the prophets, all the whole Bible, was believed the truth in that day when Jesus comes. So that's definitely why I'm doing this video and for people who are down depressed there's a lot of people that are very depressed is why I'm doing this video too to, to cheer them up okay now I'm going to conclude here my next video like I said I'm going to renounce announce it right now it will be regarding this gospel okay now if, if the angels are coming and they're doing this gospel about Jesus and, and, and plus please know God is what they're saying, right? Acknowledge God and change your ways into righteousness because Jesus comes with his sword of his mouth 
and he wars in righteousness. Okay, that's a war in fire and kill everybody. He wars in Revelation chapter 19. He wars in righteousness, doing what's right. Okay, with his rod of his mouth is the word, the long rod or the wrong sword. So now my next one in a couple of weeks is going to be Matthew chapter 24 and 14. So where does this come in to all this? Because the whole world, I, I watched the show even just now last week. He, he is preaching, send me money. I'm preaching the gospel. has to be, my message has to go. We're going to go to different lands to save people, I guess, to save. Because it says this good news of the gospel will be preached. And then the end will come. And then whoever endures to the end will be saved. So it seems like this is the salvation, this gospel here today. So that has to be addressed. And I will address that in my next video. Uh, we're going to go you know, really look at what really does it mean. Okay, so thank you very much for looking at my channel. I appreciate everybody to do research and, and to look at this carefully. Because there's a lot more. There's, uh, there's, there's tons more. But for now, I'm going to take it step by step. Try to make it simple for you to understand and to read it on your you know yourself and to study it look up all the words and i will see you in a couple of weeks regarding matthew chapter 24 and 14 again thank you for for watching my sos out you know out of darkness i'll see you in a couple of weeks thanks for watching bye